Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about first dev job and if you how you know if your code is clean enough so let's get into it so the question in question was a person wants their first junior dev job how does this person know if their code is clean enough or if they are using enough of their specific language features to get a junior dev job thank you for your videos you are welcome well on the topic of if you know if your code is clean enough well the short answer here is that you don't really know uh, if you're a junior developer you you have no idea I would even go as far as to say that sometimes you don't actually know that if you're a senior either it's very hard to know what type of coding standards you have and I have personally more than once been on both sides of the spectrum where I've had, <clears throat> I've had people feel that I was trying too hard like the code was bad because I was adding too many comments or that I was trying to make things too granular and that exact same approach in another company was much much better than they've seen before and the person was like really liked it because that person was more of a functional programmer and felt that my usage of very small functions was really up their alley and in at another point in time I had code that wasn't all that well it wasn't really well structured or it wasn't following the right paradigms apparently it wasn't real quote-unquote object-oriented programming at that point so that's why I tell I, I wrote back to the subscriber like five minutes ago and I said that you shouldn't consider this all that much really only go for trying to write the simplest code that is within your power to write and try to forget about whether or not it's it's clean enough the best way to figure out if it's clean or not is if it's in line with how most other developers write their code so if you look at other people for references you will see roughly how they write code and then don't get too bogged down in if you're functional enough or if you're object oriented enough or things like that because these guys these things are so so subjective and there's really no way for you to know if your code is good enough because that is the part that is hard with software development and that's why we have endless endless discussions in code reviews and on forums and all of this stuff where one person says that we should use this paradigm or we should use we should write code in this fashion and then another person says well but have you thought about these corner cases and these situations I've actually found it much better to write in this fashion and I will tell you my personal mindset when I deal with this sort of problem and this is just how I do this and I know for a fact that some of my co-workers think that this is very nice and some of them find it extremely annoying but it works really well for me and my dirty little secret for evaluating whether code whether or not code is good or bad is do number one is it easy for me to understand what's going on is there if I read this code do I understand exactly what this code is doing and the second thing is is it doing that thing without any extra fluff or anything like that? Is it just a, simplest, a very simple and elegant solution to the problem I'm dealing with? If you check those two boxes for me, I don't give a shit what you did. I really don't. Any, everyth everything else is secondary to me. Because unless like there's some very specific requirements on the code that you just wrote, I'm not going to think about it because I, I know at the end of the day there this is as simple as we can make it or roughly given the circumstances and I perfectly understand what's going on and that's the only thing that matters 99% of the time everything else is completely secondary you can throw out your object like uh, 
I'm not saying every single time, but a lot of the time these more complicated requirements that people mentally think that they need to abide by, such as oh, is this the best O notation that you can possibly have? Well, they don't matter because you have a data set of 10 items. Who the fuck cares if it's the perfect O notation? If it's, a t it's, a t if it's 10 million or 10 billion items, then we can talk about the O notation. But that's, w that's at least what I've found to be the truth. Most developers, when they evaluate whether code is clean or not, is I guess some of them are very opinionated, and as I said, that's not something that you can foresee. You can't do much with it. You can really only act as someone who created something and then hold it up to all of the critics and hope that they they go nice and they go easy on you, right? And it's exactly what you have to do. You just try to make the simplest thing possible, look for references so you know roughly what that looks like, and then present it. And they will give you feedback on it. And as a junior developer, if you really want that job, yeah, yeah well, you should do this regardless of if you want the job or not. At least hear them out. Don't get defensive. This is one of those emotional things I've told you about before. One of the most important things for you as a software developer. And it's also one of the reasons some companies look for people who have already had previous experience working in teams. Is that we want people to understand that it's a conversation. If you get defensive and angry if somebody says that your code isn't great, you're already making mistakes. That's not how you should go about it. You should have an open dialogue about it, try to hear the other person out, and then reply in kind if you have a difference of opinion, or thank them if they actually gave you some insight. It's about going in in good faith and trying to have a dialogue to produce the best code possible. And you will learn this at some point. At some point, you hopefully, at the very least, will go grow so senior or so secure in yourself that you stop feeling as your code is your identity. It's just a thing that you made. Sometimes people are gonna judge you because you wrote some shitty code, or the thing that you will think internally is that, well, yeah, it is pretty shitty code, let's be honest. It took, I did it in five minutes because I had a deadline that was in six minutes, but it works. And, we can, and I can, you know internally that you can do better, but you won't feel that pinch inside to prove that you can do better because you are a pro and you understand that this is not the best that you can do but it's the best thing you should it's the thing that you should it should have done and you did the thing that you should have done at that given moment the other part of this question is regarding specific language features and i think that's also in uh, that's an important thing to know about now i'm not talking necessarily about language features but there are conventions in many different languages. An example would be in Java you have a very specific source folder, like a source code folder structure that is very 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 established. Now you should know about these things because if you don't you might actually write code that confuses a bunch of people and in some cases the convention is actually tied into your tooling so the convention is actually so strictly enforced that the tools that you use need things to be in a certain way. These things you need to know about because they, it's very it's basic hygiene to know about these sorts of things. But language specific structures and like should you use if if statements or switches or whatever you, we might talk about here is less important. I think I still think that what I said earlier about keeping things as simple as possible <coughs> holds true and I believe that simply because the language structures and language specific features that you have, the purpose of those is to help you mi make better code, to write things that are better. And if they help you with that, then that's what you should be using. But you should not think like someone who is trying to prove something to someone else, which kind of indicates by this question, am I using enough of them? Well, you know that you're using enough of them if your code is, as, as I said, as simple as possible and it is comprehensible to the people who is reading it. That's that's the focus. Then you can over time learn about more language features that may help you in this endeavor but don't just add them to prove a point. So what I want you to take away from this is that remember that what clean code and good practices are is a very subjective thing 
and you can never really know if someone's going to think that your code is awesome or if your code is really really bad it's almost impossible for you so the only thing that you can really do in my opinion is to make the thing first and foremost as readable and comprehensible as possible and the second thing is as uh, as easy like does it solve the problem in the simplest fashion possible it, it, don't use like more advanced structures than is needed it's not about impressing people it is about making something that is very simple and understandable a very good thing that you can think about is that uh, some of the best programmers in the world have the ability to write code that is inherently really really complicated in a way that makes it feel super simple to everybody you may not get the same ego boost and get the pat on the shoulder for all how awesome your code is, but it's going to work and people are going to appreciate it. Have a great day.